Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Common and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen and possibly even Rudolph. Welcome to the NCIS 2013 Christmas video. <gasps> I'm in front of a tree. Now maybe it doesn't look like I'm imprisoned between wooden walls in my basement. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about NCIS Christmas episodes season 6 through 10. And if you want to hear me talk about season 11's Homesick, I just did a 13 or so minute video on that, so you can check that out after this or before this, whatever your heart desires. But now I just want to start off by saying there is not a single NCIS Christmas special I dislike. In fact, I love all of them. They're all wonderful and amazing in their own way, and I just adore them so much. And so what I'm going to do is go to from 5 to 1, 5 being my least favorite, special to 1 being my most favorite, and least favorite because, again, I don't dislike any of these. In fact, I very, very much enjoy all of them. So with that, let us begin. Number five, season nine's Newborn King. Now, this isn't a bad episode, but I just can never like this as much as the others. And just some of the storylines, I remember just always being confused with the main plot line in that with the newborn king, haha, <laughs> get it? Or should I say newborn queen? Haha, <laughs> I just ruined the ending. It's just the storyline, I get it. I get where they were going with it, but just, I just, it was not, not my thing. The elf says no to this one, but, <laughs> wow, I, it's, I'm losing all my hair, fur, whatever elves have. The storyline with Palmer and Brina's dad, Brina's in this episode, and we all know how much I love Brina. That storyline with Jimmy and her father, it does bring a lot of humor to the episode. And I like the final, you know, Christmassy-esque, whimsy. Uh, you'll just have like a little counter to see how many times I say whimsy in this because <laughs> believe me, it'll be a lot. You might need about five hands. It is that NCIS Christmas. Then we have the scene. There is a scene towards the end where the woman is having her child. And my god, this officially goes down as the strangest scene in NCIS history in my book. So, uh, Gibbs is like helping this woman give birth, and like you hear her like grunts and groans. Meanwhile, Ziva is fighting off a man or a couple men in this other room. You hear like Gibbs like chanting and coaching, whatever the heck he's doing. Do you like my Christmas censorship? Alright, so let's just let me recap. Gibbs is helping a woman give birth, and you hear all of their noises. Ziva is fighting off two armed men, all the while a very calming, soothing version of Silent Night is dubbed over this. And this is all happening in a gas station. I just... Uh, okay. The first time I watched this episode, and actually pretty much every time after that, I have to always stop in the middle of the scene and be like, what in the world is going on? It's too much for me to handle, and that is why this is number five, and also the trippiest NCIS scene in history. Fun fact, the next three were almost a three-way tie, but then I realized, hey, I don't want to get death threats for Christmas, so I decided to divvy them up, but they were all very, 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 very close. So these three are just... I separated them, but just kind of consider them a giant second place. But number four is season eight's False Witness. I love the storyline in this episode. It's hectic and it's crazy and it's all over the place, but it keeps me on the edge of my seat and I was interested the whole time and I could feel like my stomach like doing somersaults or flying away. Just, I love this storyline. It is very dark. It involves a lot of killing and trials and court and addiction and murder but it is a crime show holiday special I don't know what else I would be expecting and once again they have this scene and this very calming Christmas song this jolly holiday tune if you will is being played over a scene where a boy almost murders the man who shot down his sister happy holidays <laughs> Come on out, Frosty. But I do like this one more because it doesn't disturb me nearly as much. And I also don't feel like I'm gonna get nightmares from that one. 
but I'm not a huge fan of Denoso's seasonal midlife crisis. And that's very prevalent throughout this episode. And it is very heavy because this woman that he dated, not really, they had a one night stand. She almost killed herself and she is like in a depression center now. And that weighs heavily on Denoso. And then we get this scene, and I always forget this scene is part of the episode, but Ziva has to talk to him and be like, this is why we love you, you know, you're the class clown, but you know, you need to find balance, but we love you for this. This is, and it's such a touching scene and I love it. And Louis should probably be an eye, but you know, whatever, whatever, it's Christmas, I'm gonna let it go. And again, the twist with the lawyer, those, because she's a good guy, and then she's a bad guy, then she's a good guy again, and then dun dun dun, she's the bad guy. Dun dun. It's a very well written episode. Elf approved. Number three, season 10's You Better Watch Out. I love this episode. I watch this episode pretty often. I watch this episode even in the summer. I just, I love whatever senior is there. Even though I go back and forth with the senior character, I still love it when he's there. I love Mike Weatherly's performance because I love Tony in this episode and that's also a big props to the writing and I love how Ziva and Tony are in this episode with- it's not overpowering Tiva, it's not like, hey, this is the Tiva Christmas episode. It's just- it's- ugh, ugh, just- it's got a diamond. I mean, why doesn't he just propose to her right there? I guess they just couldn't do it because it wouldn't be fair to have them propose and then leave us at a hiatus. That's- that's obviously the reason. We also get introduced to like Kate the fish and all that- oh, and Tony's apartment. It just has that nice heartwarming feeling whenever I watch that episode because it's so centered around Tony and like his family life and just how Tony is and who Tony was and oh, and the ring and the bed. I don't even have a single bed. As a 14 year old, I had a double bed. And believe me, no one was banging down my door to stay over. But just, it's, uh, I love the episode and I love whenever they reference like their Christmas traditions. Again, the only thing that makes me a little wavering with this episode is the whole Tony's father thing. I go back and forth with how he is in this episode and I can't really recall the case. So it has some memorable aspects and some not. But all around, it's just an awesome, awesome episode, and I love it. Season 10, man. Season X. Two, season 7's Faith. This ending is the best. Well, almost the best, because season 6, I think, has the best ending. But they're very close. They're like this, this far off. I mean, just talk about whimsy. When Tony hands the woman the doll and Ziva's smiling in the background and the woman is almost in tears because she's so touched and McGee gets the little kid on the attack screen with his mother and Abby and McGee are like kissing each other's faces. I just have the dumbest, stupidest, jolliest smile on my face that it puts Santa Claus to shame. I mean, I'm just whimsy out the wazoo. And I love it. I love that they incorporated a different culture, a different religion. You don't see many Christmas episodes incorporating Muslim culture and I thought that was just so interesting and so unique and it was, in my opinion, very well written and really well done. Plus, a majority, an overwhelming majority of this acting was just unbelievable. It was amazing. Like, that son looked like he was shooting for an Emmy. I mean, it was just fantastic. They just found fantastic actors for that one. Even the son at the end. Like sometimes they can, you know, child actors, you don't even know. This kid was awesome. Just, but the ending for this episode makes me want to just cry many a happy tear. And that is why it is number two on my list. Number one. Number one and I actually go way back. This was actually one of the first NCIS episodes I saw, and for a while, it was one of my favorites. The episode is season six's Silent Night. I actually went out and bought the season six DVD just so I could play Heartland and this episode on repeat, even though it was like, what, June? But I adored this episode, and I still adore this episode. 
Like I said, all the episodes are whimsical in their own right, but this one just has a different type of magic. This like certain whimsical tone that none of the others seem to have and I can't explain why and I don't know why that is but it just does and the music is so perfect and the imagery is gorgeous especially with the Vietnam Memorial Wall I mean the score the imagery the theme itself it's just so wonderful and I love the ending I mean, I love this whole episode. I love the moments that Tony and Ziva have together, even though they're not Tiva moments. I still appreciate them so much. They're just these scenes that I always remember. They always stick in my head. I feel like it's a really inspiring episode. And that ending, I love when they're on MTAC and they're gonna watch It's a Wonderful Life. You see Gibbs with the father. And Gibbs says this line that if he had one wish it would be to hug his daughter again and that can never happen and that line just always gets to me even when I just started watching NCIS and wasn't 100% sure what was going on I still felt that line and I don't even know why and that's how you know it's a really memorable touching line like the gravity of this whole episode I think is remarkable it's just an amazing Christmas classic for NCIS even though the reveal of like the antagonist, the killer is a little weak, the episode is still wonderful. It has whimsy, it has humor, it has serious moments, it has lighter moments, and it's just... <sighs> it's wonderful. So that's my top 5 NCIS Christmas list. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my pigtails and my Christmas tree. And this whole video might be out of focus because it's not used to focusing on these lights. And I hope you enjoyed my hat. I hope you guys are having an awesome holiday season. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year. Once again, I'm so thankful for you all and I love each and every one of you. But yes, how many of you like eggnog? Because I had eggnog for the first time tonight and I can't say I like it that much. Go wild with the eggnog, turkey, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. And tell me your favorite NCIS Christmas episodes in the comments or in a video response because I would love to see them. And <sighs> Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>